microphone so that the sound is a bit better. Bear with, bear with. I don't know why the... Is the screen okay? Do you know what? I think what it is, it's my cam, it's my phone. Hang on, sorry about this. It's my phone. I think I've got it on the dark, too bright, but it's now it looks like it's out there. I've got a massive magpie out on the. I don't know if you'll see it. Oh, yes. sorry, there was a big magpie I wanted to show you, but um, it's gone. Prepared as usual. Here we go, there's the microphone there. So let's pop that on. Oh, I don't have my laptop. <laughs> I'm so unprepared. Sorry, I'm just going to get my laptop. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, dear me. Uh, plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. Come back. I've got my laptop. Try that again. I'm back. I've got my laptop. Right. I've got the microphone on. Laptop's opening up. And hello, everyone. My name's Claire. Welcome to my very professional channel. I'm just going to go find the video on my laptop because that then means I can read your comments a lot easier. I can see John's here. Hey, John. And Mr. Snow is in the house. Got loads on the agenda and I need to get through it quite quickly. So, um, uh, we've got Paul here. It says tech dramas. Well, it's not tech. It's, it's um, just basic being unprepared. Uh, Kevin is here, hey, he says, oh, Mr. Kevin says hi, and Tara is here, hey, Tara, Perfumes with Pat is here, I'm clicking onto my video now, hey, it's Tim, Smelly Swede is here, I had to take my video down, I'm currently uploading a new one, oh, okay, what happened there, can you, can you tell us, or are you not allowed to? Um, right, let's click on this video. Clicking on my own video just so I can look at the comments. Among the Stars is here. Hey Claire, joining from the hospital. With, oh my God, recovering from surgery. Okay, I hope you're okay. I hope you recover well. Right, so we've got quite a few people here. Today here in the UK is a bank holiday. It's um, a national day of um, people not working because of Easter. It's Easter weekend. I don't know if you, if you have it where you are. Right then, okay. Andreas is here. Um... Just have a quick scroll, see if I've not uh, if I've missed anyone. I think um, <laughs> Tara says that emoji on the thumbnail sums up how I'm feeling. Oh dear, uh, you're on a break though, aren't you, from work, Tari? I saw in your video you said you're on spring break. So um, yeah, if you want to share with us why you're feeling a bit poo, feel free to. If you don't, then don't. I'm not feeling great myself, health wise. Just a bit dicky, little bit um, icky at the moment. Nothing major, but. I've got some vodka for medicinal reasons. Okay, um, we've got Kareen here. Hey, Kareen. Right, so I'm going to just kind of like move on quickly through everything I've got to talk about because uh, I'm a bit limited on time. And so, where should we go? Um, share with us your scent of the day if you're in the live chat right now. Share your scent of the day. If you are watching this back, put it in the comments. It's really easy. Um, Oh, Tara had a second vaccine yesterday, having quite a reaction, running a high fever. Oh, no. It shouldn't last too long, from what I understand, Tara. So I hope you feel better soon. Just look after yourself. Uh, Liz Lizzie Bean is here and Christy. Hey, hey. Um, right then. So here's the agenda. Oh, first on the agenda, I want to say thank you to Gemma, if Gemma ends up watching this um, back. I don't know if Gemma watches the live streams. But thank you to Gemma for a really generous coffee donation. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And a really lovely message as well. It totally made my day. It really did. So thank you to Gemma. And then I've got a list of stuff here. So basically, um, I'm going to talk about the highlights and lowlights from my perspective of what I've seen going on and smelly stuff too in frag 
Frank world, shall we say? Um, hey, Hillary, Hillary's here. She says, hey, y'all. Um, because there's quite a few of you chatting, if you specifically need me to see it, uh, you can at Smurfy Girlie so it's highlighted, or you could just, just do a big Q, a capital Q, just so that I can see that it's aimed at me. Otherwise, if you're having sort of conversations amongst yourselves, uh, I don't want to end up accidentally reading out half a conversation. So that's all that's about. Um, Andreas is wearing Elevator Music from By Ray. Don't, don't know what to think of their fragrances. Um, uh, Tara's not wearing anything until she feels better. Fair enough. Um, okay, so what are we going to talk about first? So uh, a good thing uh, that happened in March to me was discovering... Uh, La Via Belle Intense Mont, believe it or not. So the lovely Ange of 50 Cents UK sent me this travel size. I was chatting to Lizzie about this actually. Um, it's a really nice vanilla fragrance. It's not so amazing that I need to buy it, but I am impressed for a designer fragrance. It's just a beautiful, vanilla -y, sort of slightly spicy, what have I written here? So I've worn it a few times. Peppery and sharp in the opening, florals, it feels a bit generic at first, a bit like um, black opium, but then there's like this chocolatey, slightly chocolatey kind of patchouli thing going on. And then this gorgeous, gorgeous vanilla that's almost slightly almondy. So I was really impressed with that for a designer perfume. And I can be a bit of a snob about designers, but La Via Belle Intensement gets a thumbs up from me. And thank you to Ange of 50 Cents who sent me that. So that was that. That's going to fall off. I'm just... Okay, uh, Ed is here. Hey, Ed. And so next up on my list of things to talk about, um, our Mattia premiere. So, uh, you see, I'm holding off on the drama, you see. I, with the drama's coming. Um, Mattia premiere, I tried those. I did a first impressions video. And I have to say, they do, based on what, on, on the strips, they do smell like really nice quality fragrances. Um, my favourites being the Ensons Suave, which is like a slightly sweet incense. It's got a, a leathery feel to it, a little bit leathery. And then the Neroli Orangere is still really strong on the strip. And it's really musky and it's got the nicest clean musk. It's so nice. So the company actually got in touch and they're going to send me samples so I can try the real thing on skin and I can't wait to do that. So Mattier Premier, I was nicely surprised at how um, nice they are that's that i need to calm down a little bit i'm kind of like trying to rush and breathe hey joe joe says hey to everyone um Karine says my mum wears lavia bell and she's an oversprayer so i'm a bit fed up of it i can understand that for sure right then what's next on my list Okay, so another great surprise, or, um, well, it was a surprise because I didn't know it was coming, and uh, Scott surprised us all. He's not in the chat at the moment, but Scott surprised us all by releasing his own fragrance. So the Centurion, Scotty Bean, as I like to call him, released Legio X. This is a brother approved, by the way. So my brother came round today, and his wife, Sally, and um, we had a coffee, and my brother tried this and I knew he was going to like it. That's why I got, I got him to try it. He loves it. Absolutely loves it. So he's break. He was already wearing, uh, what was he wearing? I can't remember what he was wearing, but he was already wearing something here. So he sprayed up all his arms and he absolutely loved Ligio X, which is a fruity green fragrance. Kind of like, um, it's a, a bit citrusy. It's a bit green. It's got tomato leaf. But then when it dries down, leather comes through, and it but it doesn't feel too harsh. It doesn't completely overtake everything. It's really nicely done. So uh, that is uh, Legio X. So that came out in March from Scott, and he has the YouTube channel, The Centurion. And I will later, once this video is done, I will upload uh, the details of that on there. That's that, I need to breathe. <sighs> Has anyone got any discoveries they want to share? How was March? What was the best thing in fragrances that you discovered in March? <laughs> Paul says, bro's got good taste. 
Okay then, so, what else have we got here? So one of my most worn fragrances in March and what really worked for me, particularly in March, because the weather's been a bit up and down. It's been, we've had some really nice spring days. In fact, we've had two or three days that you could actually sit out in the sun in a t-shirt and I actually got a little bit of a tan on my chest. So, um, but for the most part, it was still pretty chilly, even though there's maybe the sun came out and maybe the days were a bit more spring-like, but it was, it's still pretty chilly. Today's really chilly and windy. The fragrance that has massively worked for me outdoors on in these particular days, these chilly days that still feel kind of spring-like, the perfect fragrance for me has been Sex and the Sea Neroli. I've worn this one quite a few times, particularly outdoors, because this has got so much carry even though it's kind of, um, it's got a freshness about it. Obviously you've got neroli, there's a slight bitter, bitter greenness to it. It's also got a bit of sweetness, it's got a tuberose and almost comes off a tiny bit bubblegummy and a tiny bit like, I think there's some vanilla in here. It feels to me like there's vanilla in here. And this has been amazing because I can go out on a cold spring day and I can smell it in every single breath. You know, every time I breathe, I can smell Sex and the Sea Neroli and I love it. So this has really come into its own in this uh, sort of this current weather situation. So I'm loving that, especially when I use the matching body oil. So that has been amazing for March. Um, John says probably Bokeh Encore best for me. Damn Kareen. Who's that by? Do I know about that? I don't think I do. Uh, Andrea's got samples from Roos and Roos and they've got a fragrance Montha Regliosa. Yes, I've seen that. Yeah, because it is a minty rose, isn't it? Combines mint with a powdery iris and incense. And I think I'm in love. Wow, amazing. Um, yeah, I need to try that. I'm not sure. I, I might have randomly tried some of those fragrances. I think I might have smelt Summer Exence, but at Exence there's a million fragrances. So it's very difficult to remember what you tried or to remember what you liked and stuff like that. Uh, Karine says, same weather, same here, 28 degrees last Wednesday, right now it's seven degrees. Yeah, it's, um, it's really weird how, uh, how it's, this weather's so changeable right now. Demi is here, Demi Minwi, hey Demi. Um, to, uh, Karine tried Mayer NJ's Nordic Cedar outdoors, loved it, we'll have to get a bottle eventually. A yard here says, I love sex in the scene, Roly. Too bad someone <coughs> doesn't like it. I take it that's <coughs> Hillary. <laughs> Hillary. <laughs> um, Nigel's here. Hey, Nigel. Among the stars, do you have a favourite rainy day fragrance? Speaking of spring, I don't know if anything really comes to mind. Um, rainy days. Usually I probably go for um, richer, sweeter fragrances on a rainy day. So maybe would say just pull one out of the park. Byzance from Ormond Jane Byzance. Uh, it's a spicy, fruity vanilla. I love it. Kind of a bit of a huggy, warming hug kind of fragrance. Hill says the best thing I found is Licrizia Nero from Angelo Caroli. Soft yet frigid mint eucalyptus licorice. Well, you love your licorice, don't you, Heels? Is my um my colour a bit weird? Because even on my screen, I look a bit washed out. Is my colour a bit strange, people? Do I need to turn the light up a little bit? Um. Okay. Oh, an orchestra. Oh, is that the one you said that smells a bit like Rolling in Love? Is that that one? No, this light's too bright, I can't handle that. Can't do that. Um, Sal's here, hey Sal. I'm halfway through your latest video. Um, I don't watch as much YouTube as I want. I, I don't let myself watch as much as I want, but I am halfway through yours. Oh, Mary Beth is here. Rainy day fragrance for me is Louis Vuitton's Matière Noir, the only time I wear it. Um, uh, Tara says the color's okay. Okay, thank you. Right, let's carry on then. What else are we going to talk about? So my most worn, and I actually received this in March. I bought this uh, from, I think this one was from Pulse of Perfumery. 
and I got this in March and I've put that much of a dent in it so yeah I am wearing it all the time the suite is on her way over I'm wearing this one all the time I love it it's a, it's really musky it's um kind of a slightly mineral mask it's like sweet sneezing now um it's flowery but I think it's supposed to have it's supposed to have lily in it but none of the flowers are too heady they're not too sharp and then this musk just is everything it's like a bit like the here she comes a bit like the um Narciso Rodriguez musk kind of not maybe not exactly but here's sweetie there she is. Sweetie, come look at look at the camera here. Look. There. There she is. So yeah, there's a little bit of sweetie for you. And now I can't straighten up the camera. Okay, that'll have to do. Um so absolutely loving Levant from Ormond Jane. It's from the Route de la Soie, the Silk Road line. And that's been getting a lot of wear. <laughs> Even if I don't wear it as my main fragrance, I, I it's a really good one for layering. I mean, I ha happily wear it on its own. It's good enough for, for that. But sometimes if I feel like I should wear something else, then I might wear something else. But then I'll also wear that on a wrist or both wrists or something like that. Love it, love it, love it. Um, Karine says, Bokeh Encore reminds me of J'adore Infinissimi with Orange Celea on top. <laughs> okay. That is Shadow Infinissimi. I quite like the opening and then I really don't enjoy the dry down. It's like it opens really beachy, you know, kind of like sweet exotic florals and I don't know, something happens in the dry down and I don't enjoy it. Christina's here. She says, hey everyone, hey Christina. Um, Sally says, I want to give Infinissimi another try. Last time I tried it wasn't into tuberos, but I am now. Ah. See, see if you change your mind. Hey Heather, Heather says hey. Right, what else are we gonna talk about? Um, so we, oh, I'm just gonna briefly cover musk therapy again. Initio Parfums, I ordered blind musk therapy, did an unboxing, did a first impressions, quite liked it, but I didn't love it. And in the dry down it goes a little bit sharp, woodsy, kind of like a vetiver dry woods kind of thing to me and I just don't love it so I have sold it it's gone that was in my declutter video so musk therapy bye bye but because of that because I sold it and I didn't make too much of a loss I allowed myself to make a purchase I bought something from eBay that was a really good bargain I've told John what it was I don't think I've mentioned it here so I'm not going to tell you because I'll probably do a mystery unboxing. If you want to guess, feel free to guess. I will tell you that there's rose and aldehydes in the notes. That's all I'm going to tell you. And then another thing that arrived in March that was a success is this one here, Miss Dior. Absolutely blooming. I've given it a good few wearings. I love this, it's another musky floral, but the florals in here, it's floral, it's quite rich. So, um, and this one, funnily enough, reminded me a little bit of a Galan's Chalimar Souffle de Parfum. This has that kind of fluffy muskiness and the same sort of level of sweetness and I can't remember what the flowers are in this. I think it's pe pe peony maybe, and I don't know if it's rose. It does feel like there's a bit of white floral in here as well. It's kind of got a fruity feel. I think it's got raspberry, might have black currant, not sure. So it's a fruity floral musk, you know, it's not groundbreaking, but it's really nice. The musk is beautiful. This is a bit richer than um, Levant. Levant's not particularly rich. It's quite, it's kind of fresh and, um, not that warming this is quite warming and a little bit syrupy as well so that's definitely a win for me absolutely blooming off of miss dior and so a little look see if anyone's talking and no didn't have live clap live chat clicked though so i better do that just in case i miss anything um right 
So what else have we got on this list here? Oh, so the stinker of the month, the one that um, that I really thought was pretty poo, the one that earned the poo emoji in the title is, is that uh, I did talk about it. I compared it to Virgin Island Water in a video. It's the Simone Andreoli Malibu Party in the Bay. That was my stinker of the month. I offered the decan up for a giveaway and I only had one person <laughs> take part, so that person got the uh, got the decant, and they liked it, so fine. Um, and a lot of people do. In fact, I can't find a negative review except my own. Uh, <laughs> but for me, it, it was an ambroxan bomb. Now I think I I over I over recognize. No, don't knock that over, sweetie. She's doing that thing that cats do. She's trying to knock a sample over, and this sample is very very special, and I'll be getting to it in a minute. Um, I think I am oversensitive to ambroxan to the point that if anything's got a certain amount in it, I can't smell anything else but ambroxan. And I think that Simone Andreoli fragrance, the ambroxan is at such a level that to me it m completely muddied the waters of what should have been a really nice fragrance. You could smell the other components, but it was just completely ruined by ambroxan just like muddying it all up. And it was just absolute stinker to me. But that goes to show you because loads of people love it there isn't a negative review out there I'm I'm the only one so that's why you really have to take my opinion with a pinch of salt because just because I don't like it doesn't mean you won't and I certainly would never say that someone has bad taste just because they like something I don't like it's just I can't help it I'm oversensitive to certain things these days and maybe I've been overexposed to too many fragrances I'm ruined I'm absolutely ruined so what's next? Um, we've done Absolutely Blooming. Okay, we've covered a lot. I've rushed through. I've rushed through lots of, lot. I've got everything done on the list. Um, I've got now for you two fragrances I discovered in March that I think are worth your attention. One of which I have fallen head over heels in love with and I want a bottle, but it's fucking stupidly expensive. So I'm gonna do that in a minute. The first one, Actually, I've got a little review written down of it. So, ugh, I wasn't sure if we were going to have time, but I think we do. So, I'm going to give you a really mini review on this fragrance, which I've had this sample for ages. It's called Rose Arabia Almond. I've had this sample for ages. It's got a cat hair attached to it. I don't know if you'll be able to see. There's a cat hair hanging off. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Stuck on the label. Cat hair's everywhere in this house. So, it's called... Rose Arabia Almond, and I've had this sample for ages. I think the first time I tried it, I was slightly underwhelmed because the note listing is like, it's a really big note listing. I won't give you the notes, but I absolutely loved every single note on the note listing. So I really was desperate to try it for so long. And when I finally did get to try it, I was slightly underwhelmed. And then I pulled it out the other day and retried it. And I was really impressed. Not to the point that I'm going to buy a bottle. A bottle is, the price is really good and I think it's worth it. It's £95 for 100 mils. Came out in 2019. And um, I'm going to spray it. On. Sweetie, she's knocked over the Intensement Travel Spray. But it's fine, it didn't break, so it's all good. Um, so spray it on here. And yeah, so I wore it the other day and I was so impressed. That I wrote a little mini review. So here goes the mini review. So it opens up a medicinal, it smells a little bit like a plaster, or if you're in the States, you call it a band aid, weirdos. So it smells like a plaster, but in a kind of nice, comforting way. Also reminds me of germaline, which I don't know what the equivalent is, but germaline, when you're little and you cut yourself, and your mum will open a pot of this, this thick, pink cream and, and she clean hopefully clean it if not if she's not in a, inclined to she might not but she would chuck a load of germaline on and maybe a plaster or a band-aid and um, this kind of reminds me of band-aids and germaline which and germaline to me is quite a nice smell I, I quite like it but it doesn't stay like that very long anyway and then it becomes this fruity rose with like a slightly fruity kind of cherry-ish nuance I don't think cherries are listed notes but almond and cherry can have, they can be interchangeable, can't they? 
So you get this kind of like fruity, cherry, rosy. It's almost a bit jam-like, a bit marzipan-like as well. Kind of a vanilla cake. Um, I've got, imagine a vanilla cake with cherry rose jam covered in marzipan and then covered in white icing. So take that cake. Where's Tony? I'm saying cake. Take that cake, but then reduce the sweetness right down so it's not as sweet as you might expect. Kind of like that. Um, there's orange blossom, which, so this takes me in a few different directions. It's a little bit like Love by Killian, but more, more complex. There's a bit more going on. And then if you think about the muskiness of Rolling in Love from Killian, and also think about like the syrupy and the cherry almond nuances of Lost Cherry from Tom Ford. And... But keep a little bit of that plaster slash band aid thing in there as well. Uh, in the dry down, the syrupiness, the syrupy kind of gloopiness gets a bit balanced out by some clean musk underneath it all. And then in the far dry down, it's a gorgeous vanilla, like a really nice delectable vanilla almond musk. A little bit like Guerlain's Le Plus Beau Jour de Ma Vie, which is an amazing fragrance. Oh, I have written the notes here, actually. Here we go. Almond, peach, plum, raspberry, coconut. I don't really pick out coconut. Mandarin orange, pink pepper, tuberose, honeysuckle, orange blossom, orchid, violet, praline, vanilla, benzoin, musk, ambrette, and patchouli. I mean, what a note listing. The peach as well, I don't really get. Maybe a vague, a vague feeling of peach in here, but it doesn't smell like peach. So... That's a good thing for me. That's the only note actually I don't like in this list. So it's really, really nice. I think for a niche fragrance, 95 pound for 100 mil, it's pretty much designer price, high end, higher end designer price and really nice. So highly recommend Rose Arabia. Almond, I think the brand's also called Widian. Let me know if you've tried that. Do you like the sound of it? <laughs> Tara says, sounds like a perfume for Barbie dolls. <laughs> Tim's here. Hey, Tim. Nice to see you. Um, Tara says, plaster is the material for you, used for walls in old houses here. Now, we also plaster our walls. This, this is plaster, and then I painted on top. Um, and my house isn't that old. <laughs> uh, what brand? So, yeah, it's called uh, Rose... I think it's called, what did I say? Rose Arabia? Yeah, Rose Arabia. Joe Voy have got it, I think. I don't know if they actually do samples or not, though. Some... Some things in Jovoy they don't have samples of. Uh, Karine says absolutely blooming is nice for cold weather. Yeah, I, I can totally see that. It's got a nice richness to it. Right. Um, do, do, do. Right, okay, just checking I haven't missed anything. Oh, right. Um, uh, Kareen says that was for the... No, sorry. Not, not, see, uh, Kareen and Tara, I do mix you up because you have the olfactory olfact bits in your name. And Tara says that was for the Malibu one. Oh, what? The perfume for Barbie dolls. Okay, right. So, what else? Uh, so, that's most of the perfume stuff. Final perfume stuff before we move on to drama is the one I've fallen in love with, the one that I want. I didn't really have anything. I've got a wish list, but it's kind of like, it's, it's totally on the back burner. There's, I, there's nothing I really need from it, if that makes sense. And then, um, so there's a lady called Irma, and she has the Instagram handle, Lemoir de Parfum. Many of you, I'm certain, I, I know that you already follow her. She posts the most beautiful pictures and really nice descriptions as well. She's a lovely friend who sent me quite a few amazing samples. We seem to cross over in our tastes, not in everything, but we seem to cross over in some of the things. And she sent me quite a while ago now, she sent me this sample and it's called Rubicona or Rubicona, Rubicona. It's by Pure Distance, Pure Distance M. And I've tried a few of their fragrances before. I've had samples, I've tried them, I've ended up giving them away. Never, I'm nothing bad about anything I tried, just not quite me. And then um, Irma sent me this and the first time I tried it, I found it a bit strange and it reminded me a little bit of Amarige from Givenchy from the old days because I used to work way back when I was about 
16, 17, I worked with a lady, I had a part-time job, and this lady wore Amarish every day, and she looked a bit like a throwback from the 80s, she always had um, thick mascara, I think she had blue eyeshadow, a perm, and she, I think she was called Debbie, and she's a little bit tarty, not, not like bad, but she just had a little bit of a tarty look. She wasn't necessarily tarty in her behaviour, but she was just a little bit tarty. And she wore excessive amount of this amarige, and she'd come in first thing in the morning, and the stench of it, not that it's an ugly smell or pun pungent, but there was something about it, cloying, I guess is the right word, and I just really didn't like it. And that's why I asked her what she wore, not because I liked it. But I wanted to know, so I knew never to buy it, never to smell it in the shop. I really didn't like it. And um, when I first smelt Ruby Connor, I thought, it why does it, it sort of reminds me of, of that perfume, Amarige. So I, I think I tried it once or twice on the skin, like one spray, and I was like, mm, I don't know how I feel about this. And then I put it back over, you know, put it with all my other samples. I forgot about it for a while. And I reached for it the other night. It was on a night shift and so, uh, yeah, it was only like two nights ago. I reached for it and I tried it and something happened. It's just really weird. Uh, I didn't hate, I didn't dislike, I never hated it, but I didn't dislike it. I didn't think it smelled like Amarige anymore. And when you first spray it, it is slightly weird. It is a bit weird. Um, I don't even know how to explain. It. So it's got all these citrus notes, but it doesn't smell like a citrus perfume at all. It's, I guess if you took the citruses, I think they're like mandarin and a few other citruses. Imagine if you took citruses and then you boiled them right down and you, so that they were no longer really fresh. Instead, um, you kind of like, con they're condensed and sweetened, maybe almost like caramelized. Imagine them all caramelized together. So it's citruses, but caramelized and rich not fresh, not the sort, of, it's not the kind of fragrance you spray for a summer's day really, although I'd, at the moment the way I feel I'd spray it every day. It's been on my wrist now for ages. Um, it still has a, a slightly fruity feel. It does remind me of by Killian's Woman in Gold a little bit, which um, I had a sample of a long time ago, so I can't, I haven't smelt them side by side, but that's the one thing, if I was going to say it smelled like anything, potentially a little bit like that. So it's kind of like a fruity rose with some vanilla, but it's also got some sugar in it. And it's maybe got a little bit of spice. I don't really know. It's not the most, uh, it doesn't really sort of change a lot. It changes from the opening to uh, what it becomes. So the opening, as I say, is a little bit weird, but as soon as it settles, this fin and this gorgeous vanilla comes through. It's just really, really special and I love it. And um, so of course, I looked it up. <laughs> so, the price of this stuff is ridiculous. It's, um, so you can get a 17 and a half mil, but that is 165 pounds for 17 and a half milliliters. So the next size up 60 mils is 275 and then the 100 mils is 455. So actually, when you look at price per meal, because I sat there with my calculator, the, um, the price per meal for the 17 and a half mil was about nine pound a milliliter. <laughs> but then if you go up to the 60 mil, it, it gets, it's about half that. And then the difference between getting the 60 mil and the 100 mil is it's not much in it at all. Price per meal is like a few pence difference. So I'm aiming at getting the 60 mil, but it's not gonna be something I'm just gonna buy without a thought. I'm going to try and sell some of the things that I've got on eBay. I might aim to get it for my birthday, hopefully before then, or if a deal comes up. Does anyone know if do Joe Voy get, do any discounts ever? Because it's only Joe Voy that's got it all um, pure distance direct. So if anyone knows if Joe Voy ever do any discounts, let me know. Or do pure distance ever do any discounts? Who knows? But uh, I love it that much. I have ordered a sample from Joe Boy so that I can um, keep spraying it and make sure I definitely want to get it. So I've got another sample coming. Oh, there's a fox in my garden. Oh, there's two foxes. Oh, there's a baby fox. Hang on. 
it was just running. I don't think you'll see it. Hang on. Baby fox. I don't think you can see it through there, can you? You might be able to. Yeah, I don't know if you can... You see sweet, you see season. They've gone now. I don't know that. He's just coming back into shot now, I think. The little baby. He's behind the chair. No, he's, he's out of sight now. Sorry, sweetie. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> I don't think you can see them, sorry. Sorry! I don't think it's sweet. Oh, they're in the garden now. They're in the, on the grass. Can they, oh, I don't think you can see them. They're on the grass. No, you can't see them. Sorry. Sorry. Oh dear, you don't need that. Sorry about that. You can't see them, but we've got babies. We've got babies. Okay. Sweetie's not impressed. How dare they come into her territory. <laughs> Heather saw the fox, good. <laughs> um, Corrine's never seen discounts on Joe Boy. Um, Kat definitely spotted him, yes. Um, Christina says, pure distance sometimes give discounts or other deals you can buy more um for just one item's price they have quite great creations to my mind okay <laughs> okay right um so that's that then let's now talk about the drama and i'm sorry i'm just trying to straighten this up let's talk about drama no that's not straight um so what i'm talking about of course uh so tim uh, why did you take your video down were you um did you have to, or was it, I saw you did a post on Instagram that you've been getting a bit of hate. So um, I don't think you said anything that terrible. Um, but I suppose you did highlight one particular uh, um, Instagrammer slash YouTuber who has an unprecedented amount of followers. So maybe it came from that direction. But how do we all feel? So what I'm curious about, actually, so what we're talking about, sorry, I should start at the beginning. So Tim, aka Smelly Swede, here in the live chat, did a video uh, talking about some of the, the sad things that go on in FragCom uh, about, I think there was a, a person who is sending um, unnecessary messages to a lady, so perhaps a bit pervy, I'm guessing. And... Um, then there was a few other issues, but the main one that I think that's got people's attention is the whole buying of followers and subscribers. So there are definitely some I've seen myself on YouTube. I'm not really that au fait with Instagram. I, I post on there, I, you know, I do stuff on there, but I'm not brilliant. But I have learned that because, you know, when you get those Instagram people that get in touch with you because they want to collaborate and then they've got maybe a hundred thousand two hundred thousand followers but everything they post has got maybe two or three comments so I've learned that if there's not much interaction then they're probably fake followers and the same goes for YouTube as well but then you can buy comments and you can buy likes and stuff so I mean it's all it's all kind of ridiculous I, I've been doing YouTube for 10 years and I've still, I'm still under 6,000 subscribers. So I think you can pretty much, <laughs> you can pretty much um, be rest assured that I haven't bought any of my followers. But there are some, some people do grow naturally. They have a, maybe one video that blows up um, and it can seem like, I, I sometimes I see, you know, quite new channels and they've got, way like tons and tons of subscribers more than I could ever hope for and they've only been going sort of half a year or something and you never really know do you you never really know and I know that you can look into analytics and things so yeah the subject is buying of subscribers and followers and my question is actually to those of you that don't have 
an Instagram that you're trying to build, if you maybe you have Instagram, but maybe you just use it for personal stuff, or if you don't do YouTube, I'm really curious how you feel, because I think it's a different perspective, because you can feel like it's a competition, I guess, if you're in actually trying to grow your, your channel, or your Instagram, whatever. So therefore, it can feel like someone's cheating. But I'm curious, how do you feel if you are purely a viewer, if you only look and you don't really participate so much? How do you feel about people buying subs and followers? Does it affect you in any way? Does it affect how you feel about someone if they have done that or if you suspect, suspect they have done that? And um, really, yeah, I think the thing is you'd never really know. So it's kind of, I've, I've seen witch hunts before and uh, people have been accused of, of buying subs. And the way I see it is you don't know 100%. I mean, maybe you do because you, you understand the analytics and all of that. I don't, I don't understand the analytics. Someone will say, well, look, they had a massive spike here. That can't be possible. But that's me listening to someone else telling me and I actually do not for myself I do not know 100% if someone's bought anything so that's why I won't ever call someone out if even if I think they have I mean there's a perfumer who is um, almost very very likely that has done that um, is quite publicly talked about and um, you know, I suppose if you have a business and you're trying to sell your stuff, is that slightly different? If you're just if you're just trying to get your product out there, is it almost like buying advertisements? I mean, that's a whole other thing, isn't it? If you've got a brand, is it a different story? Is the is the moral aspect of it slightly different? Let me know what you think. I'm going to take a breath and a drink, and then I need to check the time because I have dinner at Sam's oh. Rich Mitch hasn't got social media <laughs> but he's offering to send improper messages oh Eugene's here hey Eugene <laughs> Eugene I, I, I commented on your um, on your live stream before you started the other day and then I got distracted and I went off somewhere else so I didn't actually um, come back to um, come when you streamed <laughs> um, and, and Rich Mitch was on that stream as well um, so Tim from Smelly Sweet says not that much hate no the intel I got was from someone that broke a trust okay um, yeah so uh, Tim Wilcox Smelly Sweet is also a Tim just so you know <laughs> um, and Eugene's upset that he doesn't get improper messages. So Rich has offered to send him some improper messages. Okay, Robert's here. Hey, Robert. And uh, Heather says, I don't think I follow anyone that does that. Um, <laughs> dinner at Sam's uh, is better than breakfast at Tiffany's. Yeah. <laughs> Hilary says, I always cough. I always come when Eugene streams. <laughs> right, okay. Um, have you got anything to say on this subject, everyone? Or um, I'm going to bugger off in a minute because I have uh, dinner commitments. Pie, waffles, gravy and peas. <laughs> I've been reliably informed. What have you all got for dinner? Um, yeah. Um... That's kind of really the only drama that's been, well, the only drama I have been seeing is this. Um, a lot of people kind of jumped on the buying followers, buying subs, posting um, that they don't, um, I can't remember, but they don't approve or whatever. Um, uh, Andrea says, well, if you take a look at the number of my followers, you'll realise I haven't bought subscribers. But to be honest, I don't care if people do that. Yeah, see, that's what I... I um, that's what I'm curious about because I remember when it came up before a few, quite a few years ago, and there was, a, yeah, as I say, there was a bit of a witch hunt on, and at the time, I, had, you know, I didn't really care too much. It's like, well, do you know what? Even if he has, I'm not that bothered. 
I think I've slightly changed now because I've, I've been a bit more ambitious. I'm, I am trying to grow my channel now. So maybe my feelings have slightly changed, but at the end of the day, they're not real followers. And there isn't, I don't think there really is competition. People will, people will watch what they want to watch. And yeah, they, people are going to be shown the bigger channels. That's the only thing. So because of the bigger channels, whether they're with real subscribers or not, the, they're going to kind of like swamp and the people that aren't already following are going to be shown the bigger channels first and um, not the smaller channels. So that is a, an effect. Tim Smelly Swede says, the moral is that if you do sports and use steroids for a short while, you get love and fame. And in the end, everybody finds out you are a fraud brand or influencer. Yeah, and that's the thing. I don't think in the end... I mean, imagine if you bought a ton of subscribers, you get quite big then, and then you get natural growth because you're bigger, you get natural growth because you then get shown to more people. So then imagine you start getting like really great brand deals and you know, everything kicks off and it's amazing. But then imagine someone says, hang on a minute, where did this person come from? Someone somehow uses the numbers to prove you to prove that you bought subs and you bought for you know followers whatever and then you know your whole world could potentially come crashing down a bit like when a, a celebrity uh suddenly is shown to have tweeted something racist or smoked weed you know back 20 years ago it can come back and bite you on the bum can't it um Uh, John says, I can see why it frustrates people. It makes no difference to my life. Tracy says, I find it sad hearing that people buy subs, but people also do giveaways saying, follow me, etc. instead of just wanting people to join them because they love their Insta page and perfume chat. Yeah, true. Um, Nigel says, I'm still grinding away. Might reach 2K by the time I'm 90. All right, well, let's, let's, um, who's not, who's not sub to two cents worth? Come on, go and sub to him. Let's, let's get him up. To, <laughs> let's get him up towards the 2K before he hits 90. Um, Corrine says, I think it doesn't affect frag geeks in the end. They watch what they want to watch. Exactly. I think that's the, that's the thing, isn't it? Uh, I know I, I do. I don't watch channels because they're big. I, I only watch what I want to watch. Eugene says, just do you, watching others takes you away from what you're meant to do, which should be taking all the attention it deserves. Yeah, that's good advice. Um, Tim, always incredibly impressed how you managed to read comments and carry on talking. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Drill bits here. I too don't do any social media, Twitter, Facebook, etc. Um, Sue Poo is here. Hey, Sue Poo. Sue, I meant to text you. Sorry. Thank you so much for the erisomy, erisomy sample. Um, very kind of you. I'll, I'll, I've tried it a couple of times. I'll let you know what I think. Um, Heather's already subbed to Nigel. Of course you are, Heather. Uh, Tara says, I'd rather be smaller and have good interaction. I totally agree with you because let's say for me now if i was doing if i did have a massive following this live stream wouldn't be so intimate i wouldn't be able to read out all the comments it would be more about me and less about you because it would just be impossible to um to get this this nice feeling that we all have you know so i i quite enjoy that and i think um I enjoy the trust that you put in me. Like, it makes me feel really good. I'm going to get emotional, but I really do. Um, John says, what do you get for having loads of subs and followers, though? A big shiny medal. Well, I think um, some people, are, if you're a bit more of an entrepreneur, you can really turn that around to make money in offshoots, not necessarily from directly. You don't get, obviously, Instagram don't pay you at all. YouTube, you get a bit of AdSense, but it's not really that much. But as soon as you get uh, people that are good at getting uh, sponsorships or um, starting their own little thing, they can really turn it around to make some money, can't they? 
Oh, Rush is here. Hey, Rush. Been a Nigel sub for some time already. Hello, all. Right, I'm really going to have to go. Otherwise, I'm going to be late for dinner. We don't want the pie to burn now, do we? Oh. Mind you, I need to finish this before I go anywhere. <laughs> so I uh, hope you all have a wonderful evening. Happy Easter. I probably won't be back until another about maybe a week or so ago. A week or so ago? Probably won't be back for a little while because I am busy this weekend. Back to work. I'm actually working Monday, Easter, uh, Easter Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So I'll be back hopefully with a video midweek of some description. This was going to be a, a video, like a recorded video. And I decided that it would just be easier to do it as a live stream. And I wanted to see you all. Have a fantastic Easter, or if you don't celebrate Easter, I hope you at least eat chocolate and get some time off work. And I am now going to have to go. So thank you for coming. Bye.